Hey everybody, welcome to Around the Twist, episode 195. It is February 11th, 2015, and Tara is my co-host today. Mwah! Her brother's still napping, so. And I have a daisy to hear too, but yes, that's a daisy right down there. That's a munchkin. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Around the Twist. I hope you guys are ready for some knitting and have your hot beverage of choice ready. I've got root beer float coffee this week, which is gonna be interesting drinking that around a toddler. So we'll see how this goes, yay. Okay, first things first, what I have on my needles. I have two brand new projects on my needles because I have another one that's off, so we have an FO of the week. No spinning, but there is some pokey things. Yeah, and there's plans for more projects in the future. So the monogamous knitter is gone. I knew she wasn't going to stick around too long, just the way things are. So let's start. I got to move stuff around here a little bit. Uh, let's plunk that. I kind of have a pyramid of stuff over here, so I'm hoping nothing falls and creates a disaster. But isn't that the life of a podcaster? You pile things up just out of camera range so no one can see how bad things are. <laughs> okay, so first things first. In my Stitch by Jessalou box bag, uh, Jane Hat box bag, I have from Friday Studios, the lovely Frida was willing to dye me up some two by two hands of blue on her Monday base. She had some listed in a glittery, uh, her silver base, I can't remember the day of the week. Was it Thursday? Each of her bases is named for a day of the week. So this is the Monday base. It is 75% superwash wool, not merino, just wool, and 25% polyamide. I wanted something long wearing for the hubby because these are socks for him. So I showed this a couple weeks ago. Oh yes, that's better. There's the focus. And we have the new camera. So yay, look at that focus coming straight back to where it's supposed to be. Awesome me like two minutes to install the thing and download the drivers and yeah so now I've started I'm just doing a 72 stitch super or 72 stitch super wash 72 stitch vanilla sock okay. for hubby uh oh you dropped the knit kit I'm sorry you guys there you go oh you are welcome so I've started the ribbing, just a simple one by one rib. I'm not sure how this stripe sequence is going to work up exactly because so far I have black, white, black. The next stripe is blue. So I don't know if it goes black, white, black, blue, black, white, black, blue, or what? Looks like after the blue is another black and maybe white. I don't know. We'll wait and see. It's a surprise. It's a mystery. It's how things work. So I'm knitting this on US 1's 2.25 millimeter needles using a Chai Gu needle, which I only have two US 1's around here for some bizarre reason, or at least only two that I could find because Tara wasn't helping me search because she was taking a nap. Yeah, you were taking a nap. Yes, you were. So I've got a few rows of ribbing done, well, more than a few, like eight rows of ribbing done on it. I want to make it a little deeper. These are for hubby. Um, he wants a shorter cuff, but he said longer than the last one that I knit him. So I think I'm going to try to do a four inch cuff and then a heel. We'll see how it goes. Whatever he wants, we'll make it work. And if I do it longer and he's like, eh, can you rip it back? I'm going to laugh at him and say, oh no, 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 you're going to put up with it. <laughs> it's kind of how, like I told you guys before, right? No, oh, no, I have a knot. Oh no. Oh no, Tara. Oh no. She's like, what? Oh no. Here you go. Oh no. <laughs> kind of how right before, well, maybe like the month before Christmas, I asked him, what can I get you for a Christmas present? He goes, how about you knit me some socks? And I just laughed and went, oh, that won't be happening. <laughs> I need more lead up for socks for him than like a month. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. no. So 72 stitch vanilla socks in Friday Studios, two by two hands of blue colorway in her Monday base on US ones. And I'm hoping I'll have a little more progress on, on that for next week for you. 
Sorry, getting everything back in the bag. Otherwise, it's even more of a disaster than it already is if I don't put stuff away as I go. Okay, so that's living in my jean hat bag. Second sock. Yes, I started a second sock. Yay! Tara's not quite sure what to think. Is hanging on this Tangerine Designs Tardis Stash Room Yarn Ball bag. Who wouldn't love the TARDIS to be their yarn room? I mean, seriously, it, it's bigger on the inside. I can cram more yarn into it. Yes, please. So I can't exactly cram more yarn into this, but I did wind up something I just showed you guys last week or the week, I think it was the week before. It's from Into the World. Okay, it's not gonna like me. It is their, oh, come on, there we go. Captain Tight Pants colorway in their Pococo sock, which is a 7525 Superwash Merino and Nylon. It's a thinner yarn, so I wanted to knit it up. What is that? Oh, never mind. Ignore me. Uh, it's a thinner yarn, so I didn't want to go up to a two. I'm knitting the Atlantic Current socks by Melia Bella. Uh, who is Melissa from the His and Hers podcast. And I literally, I cast these on last night, and I was just going to show you the cast on, and then while the babies were napping, yeah, while the babies were napping, I started on the ribbing. So there's a teeny little bit of ribbing for you. And you can't really see a whole lot because it doesn't want to focus on the close-up stuff. Come on. No? Okay, his mom is squishing you. I'm sorry, Terry Tara. Do you want to get down? Do you want to get down? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to toddle around? Okay, so let's see if this light's a little better. Ooh, it is. It's later afternoon here, so, and I, I did a take one, but then I'd forgotten something upstairs, so I stopped, ran upstairs and got it, and decided to open the blind just... A little bit. No, that's mommy's coffee. I knew you'd go for that. So I opened the mini blind that's right here. Uh, all of our windows in the basement to be code have to be, there has to be at least one escape window in each room. So it's this massive window with this huge window well that comes the whole way down. And Normally when I record it's either late morning or very early afternoon and a lot of the sunlight reflects off all the metal that's supporting the window well so I look completely washed out. This is actually not bad right now. So I was trying with just the can lights that are above me and that wasn't working so I opened the window later afternoon and we're actually getting good color. Yay! Ooh, there we go. Ha! Look at that gorgeousness. So this, is, again, is Captain Tight Pants from Into the World. And I noticed on, I follow, if you don't follow Into the World on Instagram, uh, they were blending some, well, hello, Daisy. They were blending some bats. That's what I was looking, that's the word I was looking for, in the Captain Tight Pants colorway. So that was very, very exciting. I'm not gonna get one because obviously I have it in sock yarn and I'm knitting socks, so I don't need more spinning fiber at the moment. I know that's crazy talk, but I really don't. That's one thing that moving helps you with is you actually see your stash for what it is. And I've actually gone through and purged my stash like three times in the last two years. Hi. Uh, so, Atlantic Current Socks, US ones, 2.25 millimeter. I'm knitting the larger size, the 72 stitch. And hopefully I'll have a little more than the ribbing to show you guys next week so you can actually see some of the pattern. Uh, I got, I just got that a couple weeks ago, bought the pattern a couple weeks ago, and I really wanted to cast it on, but I wanted to finish with my FO of the week. I even remember sock blockers. Yay. <laughs> These are my a little bit tipsy socks. They are my 64 stitch, let's see, let me think, 64 stitch vanilla sock with a pearl variation on the cuff, so remember every time 
Ooh, there's that beautiful blue that I've been wanting to show you guys. Every time I came to the blue, I would purl. And just keep going around and around and around. And then on the foot, I just did a plain stockinette foot. The gusset decreases I did along the bottom as per the Breaking Hearts pattern by Christy Brockway, who is Turtle, Turtle Girl 76 on Ravelry. <laughs> who has a beautiful little girl of her own. Uh, but I just, I love the way that that gusset underneath cups my foot, cups the arch of my foot. So I've been doing that in all my vanilla socks that I've done a heel flap on. And I finished the pair, yay. They are washed, they are blocked. All of the ends are woven in, so they, this is truly, truly a finished object. Yay. I, I looked back, I actually, okay, let me go through everything. So vanilla sock, pearl variation on the cuff. It's a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter needle that I knit these on over 64 stitches. I use Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight in the Sadie Sue Tipsy colorway, which if you're looking for it on the website, you have to go over to the little colorways and then the little section that is labeled Tipsy Clan and Sadie Sue is under there. You won't regret it. It's, I love this color. It's beautiful. If I could get everything in that gorgeous, gorgeous teal, like the really, see the darker one of it? Oh, come on, focus, please. There, that's better there. Sorry, guys, still learning the new camera. Literally plugged it in two hours ago. Uh, everything in that darker, deep teal, which I know is so hard to dye and get all the color rinsed and everything. If I could have a lot of things in that, that is like my dream color right there. What do you have here, Tara? Do you have shapes? Yeah? Okay. A cute little co-host back there. I started those December 1st of last year. I didn't realize it had been that long, that it was before we had even moved, but I guess I did. So December 1st until February 10th, and here we are. All right, pokey things, So, because that's my only FO for the week. Are you going to go out the slide? <laughs> I'll just lean this way, because I know y'all are looking at the cute baby in the background, so. Um, pokey things. I didn't do oops, a whole lot. I did some, namely... I showed you guys I had finished the figgy pudding, day 23, frame 23. How do you refer to it when it's a winter sampler? Uh, last week, and then I told you fr the frames for day 24 and day 25 were both that crunchy gold metallic that I had discovered, like I said last week, if you paired it with a single strand of the metallic with a single strand of a coordinating floss. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the number. I actually had to switch notebooks because I filled up my other notebook with my show notes. Um, pair them together. They're not, the metallic isn't so bad to stitch with. It's still not my favorite thing. And I still kind of have that gut reaction. Of, oh, I need to knit with the metallic. Yuck. But honestly, it's not that bad. So sat down a couple nights and I managed to knit frame 24 and as you can see part of frame 25 actually I did majority of that last night that was the only stitching the only time I had for stitching this whole week because of working a four in a row at work and that's why the knitting's a little thin it's why the it's the whole like I've told you guys before New boss says no knitting at work. The former boss who had to leave because of medical reasons, the one who hired me, had no problems with it. The one who took over, for some reason, has a problem with it. But playing on my phone is fine. I'll give it a little while to cool down, and then I'll try to reintroduce the knitting. But it really, really cuts into my knitting time, especially when I've got those days of four in a row, four night shifts in a row, where it's like, oh. and. The thing I noticed, I almost felt drained from not picking up the needles. It's like my time to rejuvenate. And not having that, like 
before I went in, I think it was for my third night, maybe it was for my fourth night of work, I actually sat down, took 15 minutes before work, 15 minutes that I really didn't have. I needed to be making dinner and getting ready and uh, doing a bunch of stuff around the house. And I, I let a couple things slide and left left out the door a little bit late just so I could have 15 minutes. And I sat down and I knit on the tipsy socks because I need that. It's I mean, some people play video games, some people read books, which I love to read books, too. That's another thing I've been letting slide. Uh, but are you moving the whole playhouse, Tara Tara? What are you doing? <laughs> My silly girl. But I need that. I need that, not necessarily alone time, but I need that focus, just that quiet calm that knitting brings to me in order to kind of be me and not completely freak out. So by the fourth night, I actually took my knitting with me and had it in my bag. <laughs> Just in case, but I at least knew it was there. I wasn't stressing that, oh my God, I don't have knitting. I wasn't developing a tremor in the hand or anything. <laughs> There's no knitting. So stitchy stuff. This is Frost and Pumpkin Stitchery. Oh, let's do the whole thing. 2012 the Kwai winter sampler and like I said frame 24 is done I am partway through frame 25 so I'm hoping to finish that 25th frame be done with the gold and just move on to and finish whatever's supposed to be in 24 I think it's a partridge and I know 25 is a wreath so those will be the two things left and then I can start on something else for Pokemon and you won't have to see that anymore. Um, what I'm planning on, and I have all the stuff for, which I know, again, that I showed you guys more than a year ago, is the Once Upon a Time sampler, which was last year's, from F Frost and Pumpkin Stitchery, it was last year's monthly stitch-along, mystery stitch-along, was it a mystery? I don't even remember. We didn't know what was coming out every month, which fairy tale was going to be in that month's block. But I knew we were going to be moving. I knew... I was going to have babies toddling around and getting into everything and I wasn't going to have a whole lot of time. So I never bothered to start at that. And I wanted to finish this before I started another project. In that sense, I'm a monogamous stitcher, just not a monogamous knitter. So yeah, yay for fun cross stitch and new episodes of Kitchen Nightmares for me to watch on Netflix while I stitch. Okay, nothing for what's on my wheel. Nothing. Haven't touched it. Again, four days of work. Sorry. Uh, very and sundry. I have a surprise thing that I found while I was moving. Well, while I was moving. While I was going through looking for project bags to put those two new socks in. Tara Tara, what is it? What? What? My silly baby girl. And as I'm going through this, I have a large bag that my mom got from Tangerine Designs. I mean, it's huge, massive. Uh, I think I showed it to you when I was knitting my hero sweater. And I just took, when we went to move, I just took all of my small project bags, all the box bags, all the drawstring bags that I have, and just shoved them in this big, gigantic sweater bag from Tangerine Designs, which she isn't making these giant bags anymore, so I'm kind of glad that my mom gave it to me. So yay. Uh, and I was squishing these bags going, wait, and I went, like, picking them up, and most of them were empty, empty, and all of a sudden, wait, there's something in this one. What's in here? I found my classy hatter socks. <laughs> I finished these sometime last year uh, before we moved, and I think I stuffed them back in the bag and never finished, never, yeah, they're washed. I can still smell the soap. Oh, I don't think I ever washed them after I shoved them in the bag. So, of course, they smell like soap because I washed them last night when I washed the tipsy socks. So, they are washed. They are blocked. They are ready to be worn and not hide out in a project bag for almost a year. So, those are done and found, refound. So, I have another new pair of socks that I didn't think I had to replace. I've had a lot of blowouts lately. I've lost... 
I think three pairs of socks and yes, darning. I know I can darn my socks. Trust me. One whole drawer of my dresser is nothing but my hand knit socks. In fact, I'm going to, if I didn't start having blowouts, I was going to have to move to another drawer, like take over another drawer. So I forgot to shut off the little walker thing Tara's pushing around. So I'm sorry if you're hearing little kitty tunes. That, oh, that's the little walker you just saw her pushing around in the background. Uh, so yeah, I've had, I think since we moved in December, I've had three pairs of socks blow out the heels, which is fine because when I went back and looked at these, um, it's from about seven years ago when I was on a kick of knitting monkey socks by Cookie A and I knit like six or seven pairs of monkey socks and the one, all in socks that rock that thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, seeing it in the monitor is just cracking me up. Uh, but I knit them all in socks that rock lightweight. And six, seven years, that's a pretty good life for socks. So don't talk to me of darning because I don't know where um, the yarn for them is anymore. It was probably used up for... Um, either for the crochet hexagons that I was doing for my crochet blanket, which I'm going to get back to. Um, I'm actually going to start over with a different pattern. We'll see how that goes. And uh, so I don't have the yarn anymore. Or it was used, if it wasn't used for the crochet hexagons, it was used to make the cupcakes for my wedding. So it's fine because my method of darning anyway is highly technical. I hold them over the trash can and I drop them in as I say, darn it. So that's my method of darning. I, I have plenty of socks. I'm always knitting more. They're not going to, I'm not going to be bereft of socks anytime soon, but these can take the place of one of the socks that had a blowout. So yay. Uh, very since Andre. The Kayuni Redemption sweater is going to happen and happen soon. I know I went back and looked. I started knitting the original, the toasty Kayuni sweater. Toasted? Toasty? The original Kayuni in 2010. I think it was in September of 2010. I finished it the following October right before Rhinebeck and if you really need to hear the whole sad tale obviously I told it a couple weeks ago but if you want to hear the original and see the sweater in all of its burned glory it is back on episode 114 <laughs> if you want to go back that far so that would be if you're going back through the archives on the blog that is in October of 2011 that was my first trip to Rhinebeck where I ended up not having a Rhinebeck sweater to wear. So literally before my friends and I that went that year had even made it to the fairgrounds, my mom called and said that she had bought me more yarn, same colorway, so I could make it again. And it's only now four years later, almost four years after the unfortunate burning incident that I have felt like anything but resentment when I've looked at that yarn in the cupboard. So I had pulled it out the other day. I showed you guys a couple weeks ago. And I'm ready. I'm ready to start. So uh, they were all, if you'll remember, kind of in the sock yarn ball put-ups. And the thing that I've found with Kayuni, Kauni, Kayuni, however you pronounce it, I'm going to say Kayuni because that's what I've always said until I get someone from, I think this is originally from Iceland, uh, to correct me. So, uh, the county effect garn, uh, there's, oh, excuse me, it is from Denmark. So it's Danish. It's 100% wool. The colorway I'm using is, again, the EF colorway. And I have five balls of it. 
So I went through and I, just so I could be sure, the, the problem I've seen other people have, my last sweater that I knit out of it, all of the yarn was in hanks, so I had to wind it into cakes anyway. Are you spinning daddy's chair? She was spinning hubby's desk chair around in a circle and laughing, so. Uh, the problem I'm, I've seen other people have with it is they'll start knitting and then the colors on one ball will be wound in reverse order of all the other balls. I don't know why. No one really knows. So I decided to cake all five balls of yarn into cakes so I could actually see the color progression. I'm glad I did because sure enough, one of mine was out of order. So, and also, <laughs> this, ooh, let's see. There we go, let's bring it back here. See how bright pink that is in the middle? This is yarn from the original sweater. I had a little bit like this was my leftovers that were worth saving. This is the yarn that my mom got me. Obviously a different dye lot. Do you see any bright pink in that? No, no you don't. Because the pink, the center is the dark green. And then the next color out, that's the pink. It's actually more of a deep burgundy in this version. And then it's blue and then purple and then the green again and then the pink. So going through, everything was kind of going that green, pink, blue, purple, green, pink, blue, purple. So that's the order I'm going to knit it in. And then I have the one that was wound opposite. I'm going to show you this from the bottom because I think you can maybe see it a little better. Or not because it's all going to look blue from the monitor. Okay. It goes, so I rewound this going opposite because I went, oh, it's going... So what's on the outside was originally in the middle, and I was going, oh, it's going green-purple, which on this one is opposite. If I'm pulling from the center, there's the green-purple rather than green-pink. So I rewound it outside to the middle, and it's still green-purple. Well, this ball, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, there is only one pink in the middle. So it goes green-purple-blue-pink-blue purple, green. So it's like it goes through to pink and then reverses. So this ball, this funky thing, that's when I went and I'm done, is going to be my last one that I use if I need to use it for anything and I'll have to go in and kind of splice it somehow. I don't know. I'll figure something out. I have four balls to work off of, which should be plenty. Fingers crossed. I am knitting I had to go back and find the pattern because it's somewhere in my pattern stash. Again, craft room is a disaster. Don't even want to talk about it. So I'm going to knit the Kayuni Rainbow Cardigan. It is by Ruth Sorensen. It's going to be... Obviously, I don't have the rainbow, which I think is EQ, if I remember the colorways correctly. But that's what it's going to look like. So really... From what I remember from knitting it before, there's four rows of color work where you do the little squares. Then there's one, two, three, well maybe it's, hang on. One, two, three, four. Then six rows of just plain knit. And then four rows of color work and six rows of plain knit. So it goes, once you get past those four rows of color work or once you get into a rhythm of color work, which I do two-handed, um, it goes pretty quick because you're knitting stockinette the whole in a tube the whole body up so i'm gonna cast that on uh probably either tonight after hubby gets home or this weekend after the baby well tonight after the babies go to bed and hubby's home or this weekend although my in-laws are coming out to visit so i'm not sure exactly how much time i'm gonna have but we'll go with it we'll make it work it'll all be good so I'm excited. Uh, Melissa, Melia Bella, I'm mentioning her twice. Yay. Hi, Melissa. Uh, she, when she heard I was planning to do this cardigan again, she's like, oh my gosh, I have some of that, not same color, but I have some of that yarn that was gifted to me when Ella, her bug, her daughter, was a baby or before she was born. And I'm like, okay, we really need to knit this stuff up. We need to go deep stash and find what we need. Oh, are you upset that the Duplo box is closed? Uh, 
sister and brother-in-law got the babies some Duplo blocks for Christmas, and we haven't taken them out yet, and Tara just hauled the box over here to me. Do you want Mommy to open that? Are you carrying it? What a big girl! Good job! Yeah, look at that! So we have a train, and I think the other one's a circus, if I remember right. So, can we wait and open it up in a little bit? Yeah, there's a doggy too. Yeah, doggy. What's the doggy say? Does the doggy say woof woof? Like your puppy upstairs does? I'm going to set that down for there right now, okay? You play with the box. Uh, so... I'm going to call that my Kayuni Redemption sweater. It is going to go nowhere near an oven. Nowhere near. I'm... Right hand. I solemnly swear I will never put another knitted item in or on a an oven. Okay? You guys have my word. I might just for a joke picture for the project page, like open my oven and have hubby take a picture of me like holding the sweater into it. But... Uh, I'm never going to use that as a drying method ever again. It's just, no, no, no bueno, no good. Not going to happen. And yeah. Oh, tear, tear, no. So that's everything for this week. I actually had knitting to show you guys. Yay. <laughs> um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I guess until next week. Happy knitting.